What's crack lagging? It's your boy Brosh, but just in case you did not know. So, excuse me, I am ready for the Saints. We're going to do the Saints offseason if I were the GM. This is the moves I would make. So, we're going to go through free agency. We're going to go through a 2020 mock draft. I'm going to give you a starting lineup for the 2020 NFL season. And this is cool because this is a team, if you didn't know, because I got the Saints jersey back here. I'm not a Saints fan. I'm a Dolphins fan. But, like, all of my dad's side of the family, they're big, huge Saints fans. So, they got a spot near and dear, close to my heart. I'm always kind of rooting for the Saints because, you know, the Dolphins don't win. So, got to root for a winner somewhere. So, I, really, um, I wouldn't say I'm a Saints fan, but, again, I root for him. So this is, this is kind of fun. This will be fun for me to do. A few rules to keep in mind with this when it comes to um, uh, basically, I can't trade players in this, so I release them. I release them outright if it's like, oh, you could trade that guy for picks. I can't find a draft similar that will let me attain picks through that. So uh, if there's a guy that's like, oh, you should trade him instead, I probably would if I could. As far as the starting lineup, when it comes to that, I don't do your traditional 3-4, three, 4-3, four, four, three, like base stuff. Uh, I basically, I show you, because uh, the majority of the NFL, about 70-75% of the time, they're running sub packages, nickel packages and such. So, my starting lineups are the position groups, that's all the most snaps last season. So, you're seeing the guys that are going to be on the field the most. Those are what my, that's what my starting uh, lineups reflect. But... Go ahead and become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. We're getting close to 5,000, which is kind of dope. I'm uh, I'm very thankful. Just want you to know that. And I love discussing all this stuff in the comments with you. Uh, and uh, this, I'm recording this Monday, the day, first day of the combine, which is important because you're not going to see, uh, you're going to get all you know, the remainder of these videos out this week. But... I, uh, you won't see really any new draft stuff till next week because I'm going to be watching and adjusting my rankings to the combine. But a new mock draft will be out next week on top of my big board. I th I'm thinking I'm probably going to do a top 100. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's dive in. Let's take a gander at what we're dealing with with the Saints. So we got a cap situation of $30 million. Uh and I'm going to tell you this. We're, we're bringing back Drew Brees some way, somehow. So we need to make room for a contract like that. So we need to make some cuts. So first cut is Janoris Jenkins. You're like, well, he played pretty well at the end of last year. Playing opposite of Marcus Lattimore, which is something they've struggled with, with Eli Apple. Uh, even going back to Ken uh, Crawley, I think is I think uh, who it was. But... I'm only doing this so I can sign him to a smaller deal. So we're cutting him, yes. But we're my plan is to re-sign him. I just want to put that out there. A couple other guys, Kiko Alonso. You cost too much. You gotta go, my friend. Uh Nick Easton. Which I mean he didn't play that well when uh what was it? Adeus Pete. Yeah. Cameron, alright can't remember but the other uh left guard there um he just didn't play particularly well so yeah, he's gone uh patrick robinson we eh, i think we could do better and then uh craig robertson i kind of want to i kind of want to bring in i just i kind of want to re i don't want to say rebuild i want to i just want to refresh on the linebacker position you'll be able to tell that soon so those are the guys i ended up releasing and that leaves us with 50 almost 59 million in cap so let's go ahead to the next doing all this on fan speak because fan speaks actually a really dope site yeah it's got some things you disagree with but i mean what site doesn't so first things first we're bringing back Ju breeze on i believe it's a 20 eight million dollar deal to whoa 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 it's gonna be two years and the guaranteed money is i think in the ballpark of what is it 
almost half. So he accepts that. Of course he does. It's a lot of money. Uh, other guy, uh, like I said, I'm going to say Tata. He didn't play that great last year. Um, uh, also, I don't think I can do that in here, but we're putting a restricted free agent tender on Taysom Hill. And it's going to be a second rounder, which will cost a little over three and a half million. So I don't mind doing that because we kind of got a little, little leeway to do that with a little space. And then my other, like, I would love to bring back Von Bell, but it looks like he's going to be asking for a lot of money, which I mean, I don't blame him. But I want to bring back Teddy Ginn Jr. I do want to do like address the wide receiver position in the draft since it's such a deep draft. But there's no harm in bringing guys that have been consistent in the past back on these one year deals. Uh, 80 million. Accepted. Of course he did. I don't plan on bringing back Teddy Bridgewater. I think he would be very similar to. He, he's got a little more upside than Jacoby Brissett, but I just I don't think he is the next guy in line for this franchise. Norris Jenkins. Let me sh be sure I bring you back. We're gonna give him five million. He's an older guy. So five million for the year. Cornerback's a very hefty, uh hefty position. Uh as far as when you're trying to like uh, it's a position that you got to pay to play, you know. So we got a little over 28 million going into free agency with that. Uh, keep in mind, this doesn't take into account uh, Taysom Hill's uh, Taysom Hill's contract, so it's probably closer closer to 26 million. So now here we are in free agency, and uh, I made two moves. Now my first move. I wanted to address the offensive line, just bringing in a reliable veteran. And that guy is, where is he? Oh, they probably re-signed him. Oh, that's so dumb. Yeah, so not all the free agents, free agents make it to free agency because it's all simulated. But uh, I wanted to bring in Quinn in Spain, one year, three million. I know he played right tackle. But I think we could put him on the left and we could get similar production, if not hopefully much better than what we got last year. So Quinn in Spain at one year, three million. And then a linebacker. That's right. I told you I'd be addressing linebacker. And I don't. Oh, there he is. Joe Schubert. And this is a, I'm not going to lie. This is an unusual one. We're going to give him 11 million, four years. Uh, just because Demario Davis is getting up there in years. And I think Schubert. Um, he brings in, what was it? It was a little over 50. Let's go 60. It was a little over. Yeah, accept it. Of course he did. Uh, it's. All right. So, uh, oh my goodness. I'm losing my train of thought. Look at my notes here real quick. Mario Davis, right? He's playing on borrowed time. He had a career year last year but the man's up there in age i think schubert he brings in something that is very versatile he's not necessarily the best coverage linebackers which is something I, i'd prefer but he brings in so much we can do with him he is a playmaker in or there at the second level he can blitz he can he's just he's a quality player he brings in some consistency and i'm not saying by any means he's bad at in coverage he's just not he's like above average you know so i think bringing in spain and schobert it, it helps out a ton and allows us to go into the draft not needing maybe a linebacker or corner as much as as we initially thought so but i do want to address the corner if we're going to be if we're going to be honest so let's go ahead. Let's go into the draft, taking a look, and oh my gosh, Dave, I don't know what I don't know what went down here. Like that's why Josh Jones, tempting, but we're kind of okay at tackle. Jordan Love, you could be like, I get it. Grant Delpit, man, oh man, that is very. 
Intriguing. So I, would, I do want to look at corner because it looked like corner kind of flew off. Uh, not too bad, actually. Linebacker. Linebacker isn't a bad spot to go with. I know a lot of people like the idea of bringing in a receiver, and I don't mind it either. A lot of people really, really like themselves, Jeff, Justin Jefferson, at this pick. And I don't blame you. I don't blame you one stinking bit. But. But. I love Brandon Ayuk. I think he's, he's going to blow the top off at the combine. He's a guy that can play on the outside. That's my thing with Justin Jefferson. I don't think he can play. I, I, ideally, he's better, he's better in the slot. He's going to be a slot guy. And then we, I mean, we got a Kamara who can actually play all over the place, but Ayuk, I think, can be a really good number two. I know if some people prefer Justin Jefferson, I get it. This is just what I prefer. This is me drafting. I'm just, I'm not completely, I'm not as sold on Justin Jefferson as I am on Brandon Ayuk. So... I don't even think they have a second round pick, but I love that pick. That's a banger of a pick. So I. Oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. Uh, sit up. Actually, I want to keep Traquan right here. So we got to get through the second round so we could get our next pick. So I'm probably going to. Ideally, I want to focus the defense. With my next pick, I think a look. I mean, I, I, Saints defense is kind of already put together. Maybe a fallen quarterback prospect, but doesn't look like anyone did fall. Uh, I won't blame the Saints if they decide to trade back to try to get back a second round pick and maybe go quarterback in the second round. Just that way, you know, they're not necessarily invested in the quarterback position um, going into next year's draft. So if they really want to take a guy as an heir apparent, they can. So Cameron Dancer being here, I don't think is realistic one bit. I mean, it's not unrealistic, you know? Because guys fall in the draft. Because I definitely think he's a day two guy. And we're in the third round. Uh, let's take a quick look at the linebackers. We could probably hold on linebacker. I'm gonna go Cameron Dantzler. I don't think uh, I don't think it's something that will happen, but it certainly can. So I really, really, really like how our draft is shaped up. I mean, again, Cameron Dantzler, who I think could be a first round pick in the third. All right, so now looks like some of the linebackers I wanted have flown off the board. Willie Gay Jr. I'm not gonna lie, it's guy I'm eyeing. There's no lie. <sighs> Take a quick look. Oh, let's actually t take a gander at tight end. It's not pressing neat, but it'd be a bit interesting. It's not like they have a freak at tight end in the draft. I mean, Steven Sullivan, no lie. I might lie. I, I think I'm going to eye him a little later. Uh, Lamar Jackson. Ooh, that's interesting. I think I'm going to go Lamar Jackson because I plan on playing him. He could be the Von Bell. And. Like he could eventually he could replace Von Bell. And Yeah, he could replace Von Bell because Chan Chauncey Gardner Johnson like they like throwing him in the slot a little bit. So it gives us some flexibility there. And my for me it might be a little early for Lamar Jackson, but not if they plan if he plans on playing safety. So that in mind, I'm going to keep an eye. I think I really want Willie Gay Jr. too. So, 
I think I'm going to focus that as our next pick. Because then Schubert, who's a really good at coming in, playing the run, really good at uh, putting pressure on the, um, the passer. You get a guy who's phenomenal in coverage. That's going to be his bread and butter. We're talking a guy that could, that's at 240, could run uh, a 4-4 at the combine. Could probably get his name early day three, maybe even day two. Um, Zach Moss ain't going to be available. I'm just going to be straight. I say it every video when I do these because these rankings are kind of wild. So I love our draft. Like, I'm in love with our draft. Yes, we didn't grab a quarterback yet, but I'm not going to lie to you. I'm kind of sweet on these two guys, Huntley and McDonald. They both have ridiculous arm strength. There goes McDonald. And there goes Huntley. Are you serious? But it looks like we're drafting a quarterback next year. Let's Taysom Hill is is the guy. So it's our pick. Let's go ahead. Let's just go with best available. Um, actually, I want to go with Steven Sullivan here. This is a guy that former receiver. He's got ridiculous speed. He's put on put on like he's actually a good size too. It's actually, uh. Oh, actually, Combine's going on right now. They're doing the weigh-in, so let's see what he weighs in at. That's right. Uh, if you didn't know, I'm doing this Monday. I'm pretty sure I said that, though. I don't know. I'll find out once I get off. <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's, uh... Oh, wow. That was our draft. <laughs> so, they, they got five picks, but I think we made the most of it. Ayuk, I think, immediate starter. Uh, Dancer, he can be. Because, I mean, keep in mind, we only got, um... Jenkins on a one-year deal. Lamar Jackson probably going to be our safety, uh, our strong safety. So play in the box type of guy. Uh, so Chauncey Gardner-Johnson can kick into the slot. Willie Gay, he's a good – he'll be good. He's good depth and eventual replacement. Steven Sullivan, something they don't have. Jared Cook, he's fine at, at – um, he's fine at – Stretching the field from the tight end position. I think Sullivan's going to be better, though. That's just me. But let's go ahead. Let's take a gander at what our starting offense and defense will look like in 2020. All right. Starting offense for the New Orleans Saints in 2020. We got Breeze. We got Kamara. We still got Le uh, Latavius Murray there, too. Uh, they could probably bring in some someone else at run back as well. Maybe undrafted free agent, even. Michael Thomas. Brandon Ayuk. I got Traquan Smith there too. We do have Teddy Ginn stretch the field as well. Smith kind of does the same thing there. So I love the receiving core. We got Jared Cook there, tight end. The offensive line is all the same except for Quinn and Spain coming in there. I think that's an upgrade at the left tackle position. And then on to the defense, Cameron Jordan, Marcus Davenport. We got Sheldon Rankins, uh, Malcolm Brown. Keep in mind, they do have depth there with Trey Hendrickson. Um... You also got shy Tuttle, so they do have very good. Mar oh shoot, Mario uh, Edwards Jr. They have depth on that defensive line, and then we got Joe Schubert, Demario Davis there at linebacker. Remember, we also have Willie Gay Jr. in the secondary. I think we kind of found the running mate for Marcus Lattimore and Cameron Dantzler, at least eventual. But we do have Janoris Jenkins there as well. Currently playing our safety, we got Marcus Williams, Chauncey Gardner Jr. Remember, he kicks into the slot a lot for this team. So there is Lamar Jackson. There is Hampton, who didn't get a lot of snaps outside of special teams. But I'm, I'm liking how the Saints look. I mean, this team looks poised for another playoff run but that's it for the video go ahead and do the youtube thing it's always much appreciated much obliged and let me know what you think in the comment section below till next time you be easy my friends later